My name is Woody Henderson. I produce a TV show called The Struggle for Justice, and this is the community that's involved in that struggle. Mm -hmm. uh, could you just, in your own words, tell us what you think about Dr. Walker? What was it like in the days that you spent time with him? Um, well, uh, as I said this morning, um, when we left uh, Petersburg, Virginia, which is where I really got uh, involved uh, in his church, and we actually became friends because uh, the church was organized. We had a group called the Young Women's Parish Club, and very often uh, the parish club members would end up at uh, lunch at my house. I always loved to cook and to entertain, and uh, Reverend Walker would join us once in a while. But anyway, when he um, decided that he wanted to accept Dr. Martin Luther King's invitation to move to Atlanta. Uh, as I said in the service this morning, uh, Reverend Walker said to Dr. King, I will come to Atlanta to help you if I can bring the two people that helped me most here. And here meaning in Petersburg, Virginia, where uh, Reverend Walker as head of the NAACP and the Petersburg Improvement Association realized that he was not going to wait any longer for the national NAACP to take on the case of black folk not being able to use the library in Petersburg, Virginia. So we had quite a movement going on there. And I was just simply very much involved uh, because uh, the, the, our church, Guildfield Baptist Church, Reverend Walker's church, um, was the, the base, that was the platform from which we worked. I ended up making picket signs and working with youngsters and other people in the church doing what I then called nonviolence uh, training workshops. Didn't know a lot about nonviolence training, but I was on my way to learn much more about it. So again, I was working uh, with Reverend Walker there in Petersburg, Virginia, and got the invitation to move to Atlanta when he decided to move there to work with Dr. King. Mm -hmm. So that was the, you know, the, the beginning. I don't know if you want me to talk about how, what happened when we landed in Atlanta. I, I would actually be interested in, in hearing some more about Birmingham. Okay. Uh, I mean, some of the, the unknown stuff, something that you didn't say this morning, mm -hmm. uh, some of the stuff is there. What was it like? I mean, did you get to meet some of those policemen? Uh, what were they like? I used to live in Bessemer, Alabama, right yeah, outside of Birmingham. Bessemer, so I know, so I know that area, yeah. you know, somewhere. Well, we, around we, that same time, yeah. by the way, I was down there. Yeah. Well, as you know, we moved to Atlanta. So I, I was just sharing with you kind of, you know, the beginning. Mm -hmm. When we got there, we know now that protest activity was happening all over the place, you know, almost in many, many southern uh, cities and the border states. Uh, protest activity was going on. And Dr. King was getting invitations to come to a lot of cities. This is one of the reasons he needed Reverend Walker. He needed to build a strong team, is what Around he Around what year was this? So, uh, uh, 1960. 1960. And so, uh, being there, Reverend Shuttlesworth, who was the, uh, the leader of the Alabama Christian Movement for Human Rights in Birmingham, Alabama, um, actually invited Dr. King, Do uh, Dr. Walker, to come uh, to Birmingham to help with the, their local movement there in Birmingham. So um, we decided, uh, I have to fast forward here, I'm sure you can't, don't have time for all the yeah, details, right, right, yeah, but right. being there in Birmingham, we decided yeah, we're gonna go over, and of course there are all kinds of meetings, you know, planning meetings, and, uh, and meetings where we're strategizing, uh, you know, what to do next, so, you know, how we can really get the, the uh, business community, for example, in Birmingham uh, on target. How could we get them to understand why we were there, first of all, uh, in Birmingham? Was this basically the black business and community or the, the overall right. community? It was basically the black business community that we really knew we needed to get on board and to you know, understand why we accepted Reverend Shulsworth's invitation. And, uh, but we also interacted with and reached out to white business folk as well. I remember that Andrew Young uh, on our uh, staff was the person who was assigned to go talk to the leader of the, the steel mills. That was, you know, big industry there right, uh, in Birmingham. And Andrew, you know, in his coat and tie kind of guy could go over and negotiate and talk, let these uh, people running the steel plants uh, understand why we were there telling them why we were going to uh, have protest activity, why we were boycotting. In other words, we had to teach the people, both the black business uh, people uh, sometimes and definitely the white uh, business establishment. We had to be a teaching movement. So even as we were protesting, you're walking with picket signs, 
we were trying to help uh, people understand why we needed to be there. I mentioned uh, this morning in my comments in the church how uh, Mr. Emil Hess, very wealthy, white owner of the major department store there, uh, I asked him as a white businessman, what were you thinking, Mr. Hess? When was this you asked him that? Oh, I asked him this. Uh, it was, uh, you know, just a few years ago, shortly before okay. he died. It may have been six or seven years okay. ago. So I you met were reflecting back Right. I met, years I met his granddaughter mm -hmm. at Stanford University, and she said, oh, I know you, all, you spent a lot of time in Birmingham. I'm so glad to meet you. When you go back to Birmingham, because she knows that I'm in there a good bit at the Birmingham Civil Rights Museum and Institute, meet my grandfather. And, and she even called her folks and had them put me up in their guest house, a uh, very affluent uh, a white family there. I called Mr. Hess and she had talked to him and I wanted to ask this man, what were you thinking in the 60s, early 60s, 61, 62, 63 and on, when we had all this protest activity going on? Were you supportive? Because he was a very, you know, he's treating me to this lovely luncheon and, and he said, I was very, very supportive of what you all were about, but I want you to know that I couldn't be very public about it at that time because we would, the Parisian department stores would have been closed because nobody would have shopped there. We had a boycott on the downtown uh, stores, and, uh, but white folk wouldn't have shopped there either. So that was a business decision that he made. But it was very interesting that he said he was supportive but couldn't say so publicly. I have a sense that there were a lot of white folk in Birmingham who felt the same way. Of course, there were many who didn't feel that way as well.